Oh, well, folks, it's Christmas Day. So that means we're going to upgrade my uh, Linux box to a Core i3-2105 Sandy Bridge uh, processor. So let's get to it, shall we? Got my processor and the heat sink that goes with it, along with some Arctic Silver. Let's get started. Thumb screws are the best. Here's what we got. There's that nice server grade Hitachi drive. Uh, graphics card, the 9600 GT, and of course the Pentium Dual Core G620. We're going to replace that with the i3. nice thing about these stock coolers is you can just let's see if I can get it right yeah you turn that thing and they just pop up you turn them counterclockwise preferably with a screwdriver it's easier to do it that way preferably with a screwdriver you take that and then you just do that stupid ratchet I didn't turn you on Then you turn the way it says on the thing. Turn the, the direction the arrows go, basically. And then you can just pull them all up. Ah, I forgot that one. Oops. There you go. Unplug the fan connector. There we go. This is the i7 cooler I used, which is overkill with that copper core there. So we're going to use the heatsink that actually came with the i3 instead. So let's get to it, shall we? All right. Got the i3 here. It's a 3.1 gigahertz 2105 with HD 3000 graphics, which was the highest end. Well, yeah, the most well equipped. Uh, i3 I could find at the time. And of course we have the heat sink itself. So we we'll put in two and two together with my own thermal grease instead of their own crappy stuff. So sweet. Oh yeah, there's the Pentium Dual Core. Which you will see again. The Pentium Dual Core will return. I'm gonna be using it for another computer build. Which uh will be happening fairly soon. So you guys will definitely see this one again. This guy. So, I can't get a grip on it. Yeah. And there's the socket. Let's get the i3. All right. There you go. Held down by that metal latch. For processors like this that don't get that hot, I don't make an effort to spread the uh, grease. It's just kind of pointless. I did it on the uh, six core AMD machine and I did it on the i7 because those tend to get hot. Whereas this, it's just going to be squashed down by this heat sink here, so I'm going to put that in. The advantage to the stock heat sinks is they're pretty easy to install. Let me line it up there. Well, getting that on there was really annoying, so that's all we have to do. The rest is staying the same. The uh, uh, let's see, the four gigabytes of RAM and the uh, 9600 GT aren't moving yet, so let's bring this back and try it out. I'll tell you, one advantage to smartphones is using them to uh, as a flashlight because it's just dark back here, so it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing. This way. So, I think that's 
the key, yeah, keyboard. There's the webcam. There's the mouse. Oh yeah, the power cord. Alright, sweet. Let's start this guy up. Turn the speakers on. Let's, uh, let's get started. Let's see if the BIOS recognizes it. I should probably shut the uh, light off once I get to the BIOS. Love that keyboard. All right, <clears throat> we're in the BIOS now, so let's check it out. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a dual core with hyper-threading and VTX, which is pretty nice. So I'll be able to use this for virtual machines and things like that. That'll be really handy. All right, very nice. Let's, uh... Let's boot up. I doubt the boot time is going to be any faster, but why not find out, eh? There it goes. Red light down there. That's quite a bit faster than it was before, actually. Desktop's still going to take a while to come up, I know that much. There it goes. Nice. So let's check out Windows button. System. All right, nice. Very nice. Looks like it's all good. So that'll make this computer much, much more efficient. Look at that, dual core hyper-threaded. Not only is the clock speed faster, but I get two virtual cores, which use the out-of-order execution to gain a little bit more uh, speed. Or at least, um, at least it'll act more like a quad-core, but not be a complete quad-core at this point. But that's good enough for a Linux computer. There you go. That is the Christmas upgrade to my Linux box. Just a modest little upgrade to an i3 that should definitely do some good. So, there you have it. it. You can't really obviously see the difference, although booting up was much faster. I'll just say that. I think this is definitely a good upgrade. And it'll give me a really good backup if uh, the graphics card happens to fail one day. Let's say the fan goes bad and it cooks itself. The HD 3000 will still be good enough to uh, do some basic stuff that requires, well, some intensive graphics. So, there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.